Okay, this lab covers basic server-side template injection, code context. And if you're not familiar with server-side template injection, check out my first video, which I'll link below, where I go into a little bit more detail about the vulnerability. But let's jump right into the lab. As we can see here, a basic blog page, we can view posts, we'll control click it so it's in a different window. And we have posts and we can leave comments, it looks like. And then if we go to my account, uh, we were actually provided credentials for the user Wiener. So Wiener, Peter are the credentials. And you can see here we have functionality to update our email. So we'll just go ahead and follow that workflow real quick. Paste it. it. Looks like that sends a post request to change email. And then preferred name, it looks like it changed a post request to change blog author. And from here we can see it actually changes the author display to user.name. So that looks like it, we'll send it to repeater with control R, but it looks like that actually changes uh, the display name to user.name, so the user object and the attribute name. So this might come into play a little bit later. Let's refresh our comment page and we'll leave a comment here. And what we'll do is we'll actually copy these payloads from Hack Tricks. And if we go to the top, it actually lists a whole bunch of different payloads that we can use. And we can actually leverage this to potentially enumerate which templating engines being used here. So if we paste this here, or well, let's copy it first, paste it here and post that comment. We look at that request in burp. It's just a post request to comment containing the contents of our comment. So if we go back to this page and refresh, refresh the actual blog page itself, you can see we left a comment, but none of our payloads actually got evaluated. But the only other thing that we do see that is reflected is our user.name. So if we go back to repeater, we could try to change this username to something different. Now remember, when we're trying to discover uh, server-side template injection, we want to one, find where our user inputs reflected, which we have found, and two, we also want to be able to enumerate the actual templating engine in use. And we can do this two ways. One, we could try a list of payloads like we did here to see if the application actually evaluates any of our payloads and returns seven times seven, which is 49, or we could try to trigger an error condition. And if the application responds with verbose output of errors or stack trace errors, then from there we could look at that error and enumerate what actual templating engine is being used. So instead of username, let's try user and then an attribute that does not exist. User does not exist. If we send this, the application responds with no error. But if we try to refresh that blog post page, we'll see that the application actually responds with an error. And we can actually see that the application is using Tornado as their templating engine. So what we can instead do is we can jump to hack tricks, control F for tornado and see if we get some payloads. And here we do. So we can go ahead and see if we can just copy this payload outright. Import OS, OS.system, who am I? So let's copy this payload, control C to copy and see if we could paste this here. And if we do paste this, we see the syntax highlighting is a little off. But one thing we have to remember is if we actually look at the syntax of the template itself, it probably looks something like this. So if I just have a couple new lines here, it'll say username is going to be whatever we injected, user controlled input. So it's user.name in this case. So what we need to do is we need to actually close off this templating syntax or this, this object that's being called via the templating engine. So we're going to have to close that by prepending two curly brackets to close that initial declaration. And then when we send this, the application should evaluate this appropriately. In this case, we're getting invalid CSRF token. So what we'll have to do is we'll actually have to send this request, turn intercept on and capture this request. And instead of user.name, we'll paste our payload here, turn intercept on or off, excuse me. And then when we refresh this page, we'll see the application throws an error. So the reason we're getting this error is because if we look at our payload in HTTP history, edit a request and throw this to repeater again, this is actually evaluating to an empty templating um, object. So what we need to do is we need to give this something that is known, so user.name. And then when we pass this, let's see if the CSRF token is good, and then refresh, we should see username, which is right here. And then it's actually running the who, may, who am I command. So we're actually getting Carlos, which is who am I, and then Peter Wiener, which is the name of the, uh, the actual user itself. So instead of who am I, what we could do is we can do PWD to show the present working directory and then refresh the blog post page. And you can see we're in home Carlos. So from here, we can run whatever OS system command we want. So we want to RM or remove home Carlos morale.txt. And when we send this, you'll see the application will actually respond or show that the labs have been solved when we refresh the page. Because when you refresh the page is when the actual templating engine evaluates your payload and executes, in this case, this OS system command. So you can see we solved the lab and the file has been successfully removed. So remember, you want to enumerate what type of templating engines in use. And there's two ways you could do that. 
One is by sending a list of templating uh, or uh, templating payloads and see if that expression is evaluated. So seven times seven, does it return 49? And if not, you wanna see if you can trigger an error condition. And if you do trigger that error condition, you can look in that error message to see what templating engines in use. And then from there, you just move on to exploitation. Well, that's all I got for this video. If you want any more from me, you can check me out on twitch.tv forward slash gar underscore seven. Every Monday and Thursday, I do educational live streams and giveaways, so I'd love to see you there. If you learned something from this video, or if you have any feedback at all, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. But other than that, hope to see you next time. Thanks again.